So getting back into our coverage over the X-Men, we do pick up with Uncanny X-Men number 261. Now, when it comes to the opening pages of this book, we do pick up with a new team of characters known as Hardcase in the Harriers. Now, when it comes to Hardcase in the Harriers, they are a group of characters who are mercenaries, who take on different kinds of contracts to make some money. Now, their latest contract is to go after Wolverine, Jubilee, and also Psylocke. Now, some members of the Harriers, we had actually saw them back in the Wolverine solo series when they were helping out General Koi. But for the sake of this video, that's not really important. But either way, this group of mercenaries were just hired to go after our heroes. But now we jump over to Wolverine, Psylocke, and Jubilee. Now around this point in Marvel Comics, these guys are not really on the run. It's really more of trying to figure out what's next for them. Because remember, by this point the X-Men were disbanded for so many different reasons in previous stories that we have covered. But now these three characters are trying to figure out what could be their next move. Now, something else I do want to point out is that when it comes to Jubilee, she does not like Psylocke at all because in a previous story arc, Psylocke was being controlled by the Hand and was trying to get Wolverine to join the Hand by controlling his mind. Now, when it came to Logan, he was able to free Psylocke and bring her back on their side. But for Jubilee, it's really more of still... How can we trust her? How do we know that she's actually good again? How do we know that she's still not working for the hand? Now, while you have all three characters talking to one another, well, out of nowhere, our heroes are then attacked. And you have Jubilee and Psylocke both getting knocked out, but Wolverine being the one being grabbed and taken away. But now we have to jump over to Forge and Banshee. Now, Forge and Banshee, they're on a mission to find the X-Men. And here is the reason why. So when it came to Forge and Banshee, and most people run this time in Marvel Comics, they believe the main X-Men team were dead. Because back in Fall of the Mutants, you had the X-Men give up their lives on live television to stop the adversary. And so the entire world believed the X-Men were gone. But not knowing, that the X-Men actually came back to life soon after thanks to Lady Roma. Now, when it came to the X-Men, they said, let's stick to the shadows. Let's have the world believe that we are dead because then we are able to go after our enemies without worrying about our friends and families. And that worked for a good while. But then more and more people began to find out the X-Men were alive. And so when it came to more Metagra and Banshee and the Mirror Island X-Men, they got word that the main X-Men team were alive. They were like, what do you mean they're alive? Because they were attacked by the Reavers and the Reavers were looking for Wolverine and Jubilee. And so when it comes to Forge and Banshee, that's their goal, to find the X-Men. But here's the problem. You see, when it comes to Banshee, he believes there's something wrong with more Metagra the woman he loves. And the reason why? Because she's acting different. She's not acting like her usual self. And so Forge and Banshee on guard when it comes to her. Now, technically, they should be on their way over to Hollywood, but they say, you know what? Let's go over to Charles Xavier's school. Now, by this point in Marvel Comics, school was blown up by Mr. Sinister, but the basement level is still there. Now, when it comes to the basement level, it was supposed to be locked up by Callisto, who was working for a more Metagor, which Callisto did, but then out of nowhere she disappeared. And so Forge and Banshee are trying their best to figure out what exactly happened to Callisto. Now, while you have the two there, they then see that Jean Grey had also arrived at the school. Now, let's not forget, when it comes to Jean Grey, she's actually part of X-Factor, another team of X-Men characters. But when it comes to Jean Grey, she just came here because this school meant a lot to her. She grew up here. She met a lot of friends and lovers here at the school. Now, when it comes to Jean Grey, out of nowhere, she's then attacked by different members of X-Men who look kind of strange, like strange creatures. And then she's confronted by another clone of her who begins to attack her as well. Now, this clone is wearing her X-Factor outfit. And so for Jean Grey, she is very confused about what in the world is happening. 
but she is knocked out by these creatures. But now we have to jump over to Donald Pierce. Now, Donald Pierce leads a group known as the Reavers. And Reavers are people who have became cyborgs. Now, when it comes to Donald Pierce, he really does hate mutants a lot. I mean, really, really a lot. And so his main goal is to go after the X-Men, to get rid of the X-Men, because he knows that they are still alive. Now, he had Wolverine, but Wolverine was able to escape thanks to Jubilee. Now, we do pick up with Donald Pierce and also Lady Deathstrike heading over to a hospital to find a character known as Sila Markham. Now, when it comes to Sila, she was actually a private pilot for Banshee and Forge. When she left them behind on the island, she was shot out of the sky. Now, we were left to believe that she was dead, but she has survived. And this is Donald saying, hey, you know what? I want to make you an offer. What if I tell you I am able to give you a brand new body, a body way better than your old one? And she agrees to let him do his work. But now we have to jump over to Jubilee, who had just woken up recently after being knocked out earlier in this video. Except when she wakes up, she realizes that she's not in her bed at all. Matter of fact, she's in a random bed she never been in before. But then she's confronted by Psylocke, who had also recently woken up. And you have both ladies wondering what in the world is going on. Now, you do have our heroes be confronted by Rose Wu. Now, when it comes to Rose, we were left to believe that she was a friend of Logan, but from Hong Kong. But our heroes are currently in Madripoor. And so you have Jubilee and also Psylocke wondering, why in the world Rose here in Madripoor and not back in Hong Kong? But you do have Rose say, hey, Logan was taken. Now, Psylocke says that she was able to locate Wolverine, but she feels like it's a trap. Now, this really shows that when it comes to Psylocke and Jubilee, they have no choice here. They have to work together, even though Jubilee does not like Psylocke at all. But you do have both characters agree to work together. Now, this leads into the funny part of the book, and let me explain why. So, you have Psylocke and Jubilee work together to go save Wolverine, even though they know that it's going to be a trap. Now, of course, the people who had took Wolverine is hard case in the Harriers, but you do have Psylocke and Jubilee be able to work together to take down most of the Harriers, but to also free Wolverine. Now, once they do free Wolverine, you're all like, okay, cool, he's free. Now he is able to join the battle and take down the rest of the Harriers, except he doesn't. Matter of fact, he takes his mask off, and you have everyone confused. Really, you have Psylocke and Jubilee confused. The Harriers are not confused at all, and here is the reason why. You see, Wolverine was the one who hired the Harriers in Hard Case to basically test Jubilee and Psylocke out to see if the two characters would be able to work together. If they can, that's great. If they don't, that's not good for them. And so this was all a test. But here's the thing. Logan did not tell anybody else outside his circle. And so as soon as our heroes realized what in the world was going on, you didn't have Rose Wu appear with an army of characters that Wolverine met in his solo book when he was in Madripoor, believing that he needed to be saved. But in reality, he does not need to be saved at all. Now, as we dive into Uncanny X-Men number 262, we now pick up with Forge and Banshee. Now, when it comes to Forge and Banshee, they're trying their best to save Jean Grey. Because remember, in the last chapter, Jean Grey was attacked by some creatures that looked like different members of the X-Men. And there's a clone of her there as well. And so you have Forge and Banshee being able to work together to get rid of the creatures. Really, when it comes to the creatures they actually escape and here is the reason why because one of them is a teleporter but either way forge and banshee were able to save Jean gray and get the heck out of there now, once you have our heroes being able to reach a safe area, you then have Banshee and Forge and Forge and Gray what they are up to. Now, before we are able to dive into that conversation, I do want to mention that this is the first time that Jean Gray and Forge are meeting one another. Because when Forge came around, I want to say Jean Gray was dead, supposedly dead. But even when she was alive, 
She was on X Factor. Now, when it comes to Banshee and Forge, they do tell Jean Grey, like, hey, listen, we're right now trying to find the X-Men. We got word and different kind of clues that proves that the X-Men are alive. Now, when it comes to Jean Grey, she does tell them, like, yeah, listen, um, me and the rest of my team, X Factor, we already know that the X-Men are alive. We couldn't tell you guys because they made us promise not to tell you guys at all. But the X-Men are alive when we last checked. Now, when it comes to Banshee and Forge, they do tell Jean Grey that they got word that the X-Men were alive thanks to the Reavers when they attacked Mirror Island. And this is Jean Grey learning about Donald Pierce because once again, she was not around for Donald Pierce when he first appeared in X-Men comics. But now we have to jump over to the Reavers. Now, when it comes to the Reavers, they are attacking different buildings that belong to different companies that are owned by Emma Frost. And here is the reason why. Because it shows that Donald Pierce is not just going after the X-Men. That he has a list of mutants that he wants to go after. And Emma Frost is on that list. And so sooner or later, they're going to have that conversation. As a matter of fact, you have the Reavers leaders of guard to tell Emma Frost that they are going to continue to attack different buildings that belong to her until she comes out from hiding and have a conversation with their boss, Donald Pierce. But now we can shift our focus back onto Banshee, Jean Grey, and Forge, where you still have Forge and Banshee telling more information about Donald Pierce over to Jean Grey, but once they're done, you didn't have Jean Grey offer to allow the different people on Mirror Island to stay with her and the rest of X-Factor on the ship, better known as the base for X-Factor. Now, when you do have our heroes agree with one another, you have Banshee and Jean Grey walk into the hallway in the basement, except when they do, they are instantly teleported away, and you have Forge now freaking out wondering, where in the world did Jean Grey and Banshee go to? But now we have to jump over to Washington, D.C., where we pick up with Valerie Cooper and also the chief of staff for the president, where they are having a meeting with officials from Genosha. Now, we have talked about Genosha before, where it tried to paint this image of being a perfect country, this paradise island. But in reality, mutants are actually slaves there, and the X-Men got involved in a previous story. So these officials want America to hand over the X-Men. But again, to the world, the X-Men are dead. Well, to America, they are, but not to Genosha. And so Genosha is saying to hand over the X-Men are there could be some problems. See, America is deep in debt when it comes to Genosha. So it's Genosha saying, you better help us since we helped you. They also want two people who had escaped from Genosha, Philip Moreau and Jennifer Ransom. So what can America do here? Because if they don't help out, there could be a war very soon. But now we have to jump over to Forge. Now, when it comes to Forge, he's trying his best to figure out what in the world exactly happened to Jean Grey and also Banshee? Now, luckily, he was able to place trackers on them, and he's trying his best to use those trackers to locate his lost friends. Now, the trackers tell him they're right now currently in the tunnels that used to belong to the Morlocks. Now, remember, by this point, there should be no more Morlocks in these tunnels, because back in the Mutant Massacre, most of the Morlocks were killed off by the Marauders. And so the Forge, he's kind of like, hmm, I'm kind of wondering in the possibility there are some Morlocks in these tunnels. Now, while Forge goes on deep into those tunnels, he begins to think back to his past when he left his friends behind to join in the Vietnam War. Now, that Vietnam War is going to be very important for this story in Forge. But while you have Forge just walking around the tunnels, he does see more creatures that do have the faces of different members of the X-Men. And he's kind of wondering what in the world is happening in the tunnels that belong to the Morlocks. 
But now we have to jump over to Colossus. Now remember, around his time in Marvel Comics, Colossus does not remember anything from his past life. And let me explain why. So when it came to Colossus and different members of the X-Men, they had walked through the Siege Perilous. Now, the Siege Perilous has the ability to give you a new life, a new beginning somewhere else in the world. But here's the catch though. You see, you may have a new life, but you may or may not remember anything from your past life. And so for Colossus, he does not remember anything at all from his previous life. For him, he's just some guy who's known as Peter, who apparently had the skills to be a great artist. Now here's the thing. His skills are so amazing as an artist that he is able to show his work off in a gallery. Now, while doing that, he does see a woman. Now, this woman has reappeared so many times in front of Colossus that he feels like there's some kind of connection. Except when he goes outside to see her, she disappears once again. And he's left to wonder who in the world is she? And so when he goes back home to his apartment, she appears at the door and he feels like this is going to be the perfect time to finally figure out who in the world is she, except behind her is another character known as Mask. When it comes to Mask, he was able to grab her and Colossus. But now we have to jump back over to Forge. Now, when it comes to Forge, he's still trying his best to find Jean Grey and Banshee. And matter of fact, he finds more creatures that look like different members of the X-Men. But here's the thing. When it comes to Forge, he is constantly thinking back to the war, the Vietnam War, because to him, this kind of situation is very similar to the war, where he is trying his best to get his friends out of danger, like he was back in the war. Now, when it comes to Forge, he does attack the different creatures that look like different members of the X-Men, but it does seem like he might lose the battle. But luckily, he is saved by Banshee and also Jean Grey. Now, at first, when it comes to Forge, he is very excited to hear the voice of Jean Grey, to see the back of Banshee, because he realized he now has reinforcements, except when he finally gets a good look at Banshee and also Jean Grey, he comes to find out that they have been changed into creatures as well. Jean Grey arms are now just a bunch of tentacles. Banshee has completely lost his mouth. And the question is, what in the world is exactly happening in the tunnels of the Morlocks? Now, I want to jump over to Forge and Jean Grey in the opening pages to Uncanny X-Men number 263. And here is the reason why. So, you have Jean Grey ask Forge a question like, hey, is this always going to be our life? The idea of just going after different problems nonstop, like... When are we going to be able to have a normal life? When are we going to be able to just relax and say, we were able to accomplish Charles Xavier's dream? And you have four say, honey, that's life. Life is never going to be easy. Like, I understand that you want to reach Charles Xavier's dream, but the problem is how life works, you have to go through obstacles to reach that dream. And unless you are able to fight through those obstacles, you may not ever reach that dream. And so you have Forrest told Jean Grey, listen, for right now, let's just focus on the problem at hand. And currently, it's you and Banshee. Let's see what happens to you guys once we are able to get the heck out of here of the Morlock Tunnels. But now we have to jump over to Mask. Now, when it comes to Mask, he has the ability to play with people's appearances. You know, change their face, change their bodies. That's what his power is all about. Now, when it comes to Mask, he's trying to lead a new version of the Morlocks, a new group of characters who are currently hiding in the sewers of New York because their body appearances change when their mutant abilities have manifested. Now, earlier, we saw Mask being able to grab Colossus and the young woman that was with him. And we kind of find out that young woman 
is actually Callisto. And remember, Callisto went missing a while back and no one knew what happened to her. But now we know. She was being used by Mass to get Colossus. Now, when it comes to Colossus, he still has no idea what in the world is going on. But when it comes to Mass, he does use his ability to change the body of Colossus to look like his metal form. But he's not in his metal form. But now we pick back up with Val Cooper. Now, when it comes to Val Cooper, she's having another meeting, but this time with a character known as Alexi. Now, when it comes to Alexi, he is a Russian spy. Now, when it comes to Alexi, he came to Val Cooper to tell her that he does have some concerns, and those concerns about a war possibly coming very soon. Because you have all these different kind of groups out there. And with all those different kind of groups, most likely there's going to be a war very soon. You got the X-Men, Excalibur, New Mutants, X-Factor, the Mutant Liberation. You have the Reavers, the Right, and the list goes on and on. The Hellfire Club. And so for Alexi, he's saying sooner or later, there's going to be a war. But the problem is there's going to be a loss for somebody out there. The question is, who is going to lose? The Mutants or the Humans? Now, let's go ahead and jump back over to Colossus and also Callisto as a way to begin to wrap up today's video. Now, when it comes to Colossus and Callisto, they do have a conversation with one another. And when it comes to Callisto, she looks beautiful now because what Mask had done to her. But that's her problem. She does not want to look beautiful. Let me explain. So when it comes to the Morlocks, they are mutants who look different because when their mutant abilities had manifested, it changed their body appearances. And so when it came to Callisto, she was no longer the person she was when her powers had manifested. She looked different and she could no longer hide in public. She had to hide in private. And so now her looking beautiful, she says, I'm no longer the person I used to be. I hate who I am right now. Now, when it comes to Colossus, he says, you may look beautiful now, but you're still the same person. Yes, the body has changed, but inside of you has not changed. The person who you are has not changed. You may hate your new body, but you're still Callisto and you know who you are. And do not let Mass win because now he believes he has something over on you. But to go ahead and wrap up today's video, we do jump back over to the rest of the X-Men team arriving to help out Callisto and Colossus to fight against Mask. Now, when it comes to this battle, you have Mask believing that he actually has the advantage here. And here is the reason why. So to Mask, he says, you need me alive to be able to turn you guys back to normal. If you kill me, then no one else will be able to turn Turn you back to normal. You'll be stuck like that forever. Now, when it comes to the X-Men, they don't care anymore. Matter of fact, they're really down with the idea of killing Golf Mask. And so he gets very scared when you have Forge and the rest of the X-Men team saying, you know what? Hmm. We can go ahead and kill you off right now. And so you have Mask as one of his new Morlocks to teleport the X-Men out of here. To get them out of his tunnels. Because now he knows that they were really down with the idea of killing him off. And the story does wrap up very quickly here. Because you do have Jean Grey and Banshee tell us that... Forge was able to create something to turn everyone back to normal because he has the mutant ability to create different things to allow him to make things to help him and others. And so with that being said, this ends today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.